another Wednesday. Let's bring you uh, usual AM business story we have. Uh, again, remember, the segment is brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. And fishermen at Jamestown here in Accra, just like other fishing communities across the country, have been plagued by the menace of plastics. Well, a situation so disturbing that the U.S. Embassy recently warned that by 2050, our fishermen will be harvesting more plastic than fish. On AM Business today, we look at the situation again and also interrogate the authorities on how they intend to resolve the menace. Take a closer look around me. A common phenomenon you realize is heaps and loads of rubbish all over the place like that here now this is the jamestown fishing community the common activity one expects is lots of lively fishing activity but the menace of these rubbish which is typically made of plastic the fishermen say is killing their business to what extent well, a recent report shows that by 2050, we may have more plastic in our waters than fish. But the fishermen here tell us how this phenomenon is currently impacting the activity. All the rubbish from the Koli, Sakumono and other areas end up in the sea. And all the rubbish from households also end up in the sea. And that is affecting fish. We used to catch a lot of fish, but because of a rate of pollution in the sea, we do not get as much fish now. We get less than 10 crates. The fingerlings are caught up in the bottles, and that affects our catch too. When we go fishing, we don't get enough fish. Yesterday, my catch was full of rubbish, so I had to put it all back into the sea. We used to catch a lot of fish and we could sell them and get up to 50 million CDs. But now the situation has changed. According to a post by the U.S. Embassy, over 3,000 tons of waste plastics are generated in Ghana every day, and less than 2% is recycled. More than 250,000 tons, or 23% of all plastic waste generated in a year in Ghana, are expected to flow into the Atlantic Ocean. By 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean by weight. Mending of nets is not uncommon to fisher folk, but what we are witnessing here today is that the plastics actually get stuck in the net, making it very difficult to actually even mend. So most often they'll have to dispose. If you're unable to take the plastics, the fishing net becomes unusable. We have to discard it. We have to get a loan to get a new one. 
We buy the net in bundles and we buy it between 4 and 8 million cities. I, for instance, I use 4 bundles. So the way the net looks now, it will be difficult to catch any fish with it. Aside the fishermen, the fishmongers also lament the situation is killing their business and livelihood. We are suffering. The price of fish is costly. We used to buy the fish for 120 Ghana cities, but now it's 250 cities and 300 cities. 3 million, 2.8 Calibi. With a growing menace, the chief fisherman at Jamestown Community, Ni Abel Chirikwanda, said they had made several appeals to the authorities to help tackle the problem. However, all the appeals have failed to yield results. So we decided that, okay, they will send somebody here, a sanitary assistant, to go around and check those who create the great fields and then to find uh, what could be done to them. One was posted to this beach, and every morning he was here. We go around, advise the women, the men who operate here. So we saw some signs of mitigation. But then for the past five years or so to speak, we haven't seen him again. Any time we go to the summit to, to find out why he wasn't coming and said, well, it was tough situation problem. How can they see to do what they will, they, will, they will be able to do to have somebody to come again? It was just talk, talk, talk. Nothing actually has happened. Recently, the community mobilized itself with support from the AMA to get a plastic for recycling. But once again, the activity is now in a limbo. This, the the two is that this thing will be started from a few months or a few weeks to be. So these people have collected it. In case if they come, they say they will, it will be paid before this will be carried out. You saw people using this tricycle motoring this thing, carrying some along. But yes, we haven't seen how far the target. The community, however, say they cannot continue like this. If nothing is done about the issue, we will continue in carrying debts. Because when you go for loans from the bank, there's no fish to sell and pay back the loan. You only catch rubber and plastics. We need some containers so we can put the rubbish in them so they are carried away. The government must ban plastics, so we go back to paper and leaves. I think they'll be better because they decompose easily. They still think it's the responsibility of a zoom line to come and create this place. And what the situation demands is education, sensitization, for them to change their mindset and to be made to understand that it is their responsibility to see to that the environment in which they work is clean. Now, there's also the issue of uh, enforcement of sanitation regulations. This time around, we find that uh, most of the structures have been demolished. 
Otherwise, you find a, a whole miasma of structures all around the place. So from the seaside, we head to the Fisheries Commission. According to the head of Marine Fisheries Management, the issue is a rather disturbing one, which the Commission is working hard to mitigate. Yes, to talk about plastic weights has been a menace for some time now. Some of the trawlers, when they go to sea and come back, they complain that instead of catching fish, they catch a, catch a lot of uh, plastic weights. Uh, was it a, last year or two years ago, we had a research vessel from Norway conducting a stock assessment. They also came out with a report that there is so much plastic waste in, this, in the waters. It's to do with the uh, beaches. We have been sensitizing the fishers to keep their environment clean because fish is food and fish must be, or food must be in a very clean environment. If it, within the sea itself, we would need to collaborate with the other agencies, the other ministries that are actually responsible for the environment and also for sanitation. Uh, it's ongoing. Ministry of Environment, or I would say uh, environmental protection agencies, had a couple, of, uh, a series of meetings concerning this, and fisheries has been part of the deliberations looking at the situation now. The Minister for Sanitation also outlines a number of initiatives they are putting in place to help resolve the sanitation problem. We've considered all available options, as you said. And I think you heard me right when I spoke about the quotation on World Earth Day. Do we ban or recycle? We have to make a choice. This is why I spoke about the collaborative efforts between us and the MESTI, uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation. We are talking seriously. My preference is not maybe Honorable's preference, but we have to collaborate to make sure we get the best for this nation. If we can glean five billion Ghana cities and five million jobs from recycling, we will check it against total ban. We even have plastics that are biodegradable. We should not also forget about that. We also have other materials that can replace the plastics. But we are doing the minuses and the pluses. At the appropriate time, we'll bring it out. Everybody will contribute, and they will come out with our report. The menace of plastic in our seas is not just isolated to Ghana, but a global issue. In fact, according to the Ocean Conservancy, 2.5 billion metric tons of solid waste is produced around the world. Within that, 275 million metric tons is plastic waste. 100 million metric tons of coastal plastic waste is also created by people within the coastal areas. And every year, 8 million metric tons of plastic waste goes into the sea on top of the estimated 150 million metric tons already in the ocean. This could threaten ocean health, food safety and quality, human health, coastal tourism and contribute to climate change. The call is now for governments and research institutions to get to work to find a lasting solution to the pollution in our water bodies because the ocean simply cannot take it anymore. For Joy Business, Sheila Tamaklu reporting. An interesting but also detailed analysis of what will pretend for our fishing industry by 2050. We'll be catching more plastics than fish. We should all be concerned, shouldn't we? But um, also, also many other related issues we should be concerned will be the subject of Galam. See how it's being uh, combated by government, especially the Inter-Ministerial Committee on Illegal Mining. And Kujia Yankson is already lined up some sweeting interview for the next uh, 45 hey. to one hour. How are you, Kujia? Good yeah, morning. I'm, I'm good, Daddy Ruru. Today, yeah. your, your, your slangs have come. Uh, I swear. But you know, it's. it's Ashama slangs. <laughs> you know, it's interesting what you just told us about yeah. um, uh, the, the plastics in the sea. And they are projecting 2050 uh, people will be catching more plastic than fish. But that is if our fish actually survive. 
uh, till next year the because we've already been warned that exactly. they might run out exactly. by next year, especially the inshore. Yeah. Uh, the inshore fish, the known I as forgot the you're the son of a microbiologist. Oh, that's uh, ma marine biologist. Oh, marine. Sorry. Mar yes, yes, yes. But, my, uh, my, my lexicon is just not that. Today, to yes, I'm baby power. Oh, so I've been making a list of some of your new <laughs> terms. <laughs> we'll, discuss, we'll discuss after the show. Okay. But uh, I'll tell you what, the show must go on. And um, uh, right now, there's, uh, there's this to discuss. Uh, Samuel Okujato Ablako, of course, is the Honorable Member of Parliament for North Tong. A constituency in the Volta region. He joins us. He's also a ranking member on the Foreign Affairs uh, Committee. Uh, today we're going to talk about the fight against Galamsi. Is this fight still alive following what the senior minister uh, said at a town hall event in the United States? We'll get to that and other things right after these messages.